Um, the demo that I'm going to do today, it's about the templates and the modules, and some of you may already know uh, how to do this. Uh, but in the new uh, edition, we have a little bit more advanced uh, features than uh, what it used to be earlier. I think that's going to be very interesting to actually take a look. Yep. Okay. Uh, so a lot of people keep asking questions on uh, what kind of templates that uh, MassMiller actually supports. Uh, so we support uh, uh, two types here. Yeah? One is the Salesforce Classic Email Templates. Uh, there are two types, again, in uh, Classic Email Templates, text-based and the custom HTML. Uh, it's always a little confusing to understand now what's the difference and how do you really find it. And I'm going to show it to you. Uh, it's quite easy. Uh, so anything that you uh, kind of build within MassMailer, uh, we always store them uh, in the uh, standard uh, Salesforce uh, classic email templates. Uh, we do not support um, the Lightning email templates. That's because Salesforce still does not have the uh, right API set for us to really use the uh, Lightning email templates, but that's going to change, I'm sure, eventually. Uh, so for the moment, we support the Salesforce classic email templates. Uh, provided you already have some templates um, in the text and custom HTML format. And then uh, the the second one is the template you actually build uh, using MassMailer Mass Template Builder. Again, uh, the templates that you're uh, building using the Template Builder, they again get stored back on uh, back into the uh, classic email template cell. So, uh, the storage area is the same. Um, it's just that how you build those templates is uh, a little different. We're going to look at the UI as well. I uh, just want to kind of quickly go through uh, what we cover today. And uh, how do you really access and uh, create the class, tem uh, class email template? Uh, so we don't have any UI for that because Salesforce already provided the UI, so it didn't make sense to really uh, build on top of it. Uh, so you just go to the regular uh, Salesforce email templates um, that you have through the setup and then uh, just uh, Pick up any folder and create the template, or you can also create a folder if you want to start up new. Um, so we're going to take a look at that as well. And now, uh, when it comes to MassMailer templates, uh, we have a template builder tab uh, through which you can actually create a uh, template. So we have two types of uh, templates that uh, you can actually create. One is called base template, so it's kind of advanced feature, and one is a regular email template. Uh, so the base template, the concept is that if you have anything that is reusable, right? For example, header and a footer is kind of common, and you want to use that across the uh, templates that you have. Here, a base template, which has got the common sections such as header and footer, and then just reuse it when you're actually creating a final template. You know, that's kind of a concept uh, behind having the base template. We also ship uh, some... Uh, base templates um, along with mass builder if you ever needed to kind of take one of our existing ones and you can always clone them or you can actually just use them to create your own template so um, that's uh, kind of a neat feature and uh, you could um, uh, create it from scratch or you can create it from a, a base template so there are two options available uh, there are a few functions that you could do and it's the delete and the clone and of course edit and create always uh, Available. So basically, on top of uh, um, it and create, you can also uh, delete and clone MassMailer templates here. Yeah. Uh, so, the template builder that we have is a drag and drop editor. Uh, so, the features that we have is it basically can uh, pick up the number of rows, and each row can contain multiple columns, and uh, the column width could be different. Uh, and then you can also have the content items, such as text image, button divider, social, HTML, and video types. Uh, and down the line, we are going to add the dynamic content um, feature as well. Uh, that's not covered in today's uh, session. OK. And then um, uh, the merge field. Uh, we currently support the merge fields from the current object or from the parent object up to six levels. Um, and we also support our campaign uh, member field. Uh, you can see that uh, when you're actually using campaign. So basically, uh, assume that uh, you can uh, uh, support 
the merge fields from any object that has been uh, enabled in mass mailer so that's the key thing so you've got to enable any object in mass mailer whether it is a standard object or a custom object and then we can now um, merge the fields from these objects or from the parent objects of two six levels cover thing come to the demo so to start with, you know, where do we where do we store the template? So you basically go to uh, this for setup. So if you use in uh, Lightning, so you just set up. That's one way to go to the templates. And then Okay, so you see classic email templates. So that's what you always go to. Uh, classic email templates. And then you will find uh, the folders right here. So, for example, if you want to create a brand new folder, all you need to do is just say, you know, whatever the name that you want to give, and make sure that. The folder access is in right. This is very important. And then now uh, this folder is accessible by all users. And then just uh, save it. And here you can actually create a, a new template. For example, if you want to create a brand new template, come here, click on this button. As you can see, there's a text here. So there's a text and then custom. So either the first option or the third option. Uh, please don't get confused with HTML using classic letterheads. We do not support that. Uh, so we support text or custom without using the classic letterhead. Uh, custom can have the HTML as well. So either one of them. For example, if you want to just uh, create a text one. Come here, available for use. Just give a name. I refer some text. I'm just going to stop there uh, because we don't want you to pick the merge field from here um, because it's going to be confusing. So uh, don't use the merge field from here, even though some, some of the um, notation could be the similar one, but we always recommend that you uh, anything that you want to edit, um, you know, create the template here. Uh, but when it comes to mode field, uh, pick it up from um, mass mailer mode field section. That's uh, more safer. So just save this. And if you already have an existing template and if you have mode field, that's okay. Uh, just pick up those templates and then um, you know uh, you can go to mass mailer template builder and find out the respective mode fields and then correct them if you need to correct any of them. Uh, so that's the kind of a way to do it. So we basically came to classic email template and then we created a, a brand new template that's of uh, text based. Yeah. So that's what we did. Um, and again, if I if you want to go find out um, the actual uh, mode fields itself, uh, you would actually go to uh, the template builder, and that's where you're going to start off. Um, finding what the most fields are. For example, I just want to kind of show you how this is going to work. Uh, so let's say you want to find out the most fields for contact. You come to the template builder, and go to the most field section, select the respective object. We we show only the objects that are supported in Mass Mailer, and we're going to cover that way to uh, support uh, the um, object. I'll, I'll show it in a moment. So let's just uh, select this contact, and then uh, select field. So this is what you're going to click, and then from here uh, you can select any field from the contact object, say first name. So that is your merge field. You select that, I mean, you copy that and then go edit your template, and then you can actually just go um, enter. Okay. 
And similarly, if you want to go and select uh, other field, such as uh, fields from the account. So um, when you actually open up this um, UI, you can see that there is a arrow mark next to a field, which means it's a current object. If you do not have arrow mark, which means it's a current object field. So the parent object being the account, I'm selecting account ID. And then here we display all the uh, fields from the account object. So you select any field and then click done. And this becomes your merge field. Okay, so I've added that uh, company name, contact.account.name, and then I'm just saving it. So we created a, a classic email template, right? So with, which has got these smart fields. Uh, and I'm showing it to you uh, from Salesforce UI just because this is, um, you know, a feature a lot of customers have asked, hey, how do I really create a, a template within um, Salesforce? This is how you do it. And I'm going to show the same thing within Mass Mirror as well. And if you have HTML content, as I said, uh, you can select the custom HTML option um, when you're actually going to go create a template here, new template. And then you just say custom HTML. And then here, make sure available for use. You can say whatever the name you want to give. So custom HTML demo template. And this is a demo template. And then go to the next step. And here you can see that it shows HTML body. So uh, if you already have HTML, uh, you can just copy paste everything here. If you do not have it, you can, uh, if you're good in HTML, um, you can type in, uh, or maybe you can just, just build it from any of the HTML editors that you're actually using, right? Um, so this is how you create an HTML uh, template. Again, this is just a demo. So it asks you, you want a copy from HTML version, just say yes, and then, and then you save it. So that becomes your HTML template right there. Yeah? Um, and again, um, this is just a demo. You can always copy paste if you already have an HTML. Or if you have an existing template with the HTML, that's fine too. Uh, you can just make sure that the merge fields are actually accurate uh, once again by going to uh, this particular um, this particular template builder and multiple section. Yeah. Okay. Now um, let's take a look at uh, how you can actually create this um, uh, templates within Mass Mailer and how you can actually use those modules right here. So the way you can create uh, the templates in Mass is by going to this template builder. So you basically click on this template builder, okay? And then um, there are two options here, manage email template and manage base template. As I mentioned, the difference being base template, you can have your own reusable templates that are created and use them when you're actually creating the email template. So, uh, for example, if you want to create a base template, so you go to the tab and then you say, hey, you want to create a brand new template. And then let's say uh, this is uh, the header and footer template, something like that. And then you can have the header and footer here, for example, you want to an image there on the top. Uh, let's just go add rows and then columns, yeah. 
So rows, as you can see, there are uh, different widths uh, for columns. Uh, so it could be one column, two columns, uh, three columns, up to four columns. Um, in the future, we're gonna add custom rows feature as well. Uh, so that's something that we're gonna have down the line. Uh, so let's just say we can add one more here. Uh, maybe one more here. And then here, this could be a divider. As you can see, the um, sections that I have, I mean, the content items that I have are type text, image, button, divider, social, HTML, video. Are we going to cover some of them here? Uh, so it did add this there. So there is sometimes it all depends on. Uh, so let's just say. Okay. Yeah, sometimes uh, it all browser dependent. Um, if you don't find the line that's showing up, you just come here, select that particular content item. It shows the content properties. Uh, so you can change the line, uh, the type. Uh, it can be solid, dotted, or uh, dashed. Uh, and then you can actually just uh, increase this. Um, uh, you can also change the color. So there are options available here. Uh, you can just play with this uh, the way you want to. Yeah? Um, and then um, this one could be maybe uh, another divider. And this could be your social. And then here, maybe you want to add a video. Uh, and then um, actually, let's make this as just a, a base template. So I have a header and a footer. And then I have the content in between, I've just left it open. Uh, so this one could be uh, a standard image uh, that you wanna use, for example, maybe a company logo. So just go pick up uh, the logo from here. Uh, if you already uploaded, if you did not, if, if you do not have the images uploaded, the way you can do it is you can actually go upload from your computer. Uh, so this is one option. I just ask you to uh, pick up um, uh, the respective uh, image from here and then just upload it, right? That's one option. Or you can actually import it from uh, any of your cloud storage. Uh, it could be coming from um, the link URL or it could come from any of your social area or maybe the content uh, area such as Dropbox and uh, Google Drive. Just start to connect to your respective account and then it shows all the images uh, and then you can select from there. Okay, I can actually just search from free photos here. So this is quite easy. You just start to come here and, you know, pick up any kind of fun image that you needed from uh, uh, the free images that we have and just uh, import them. So that's how you kind of select the uh, free photos. Uh, so it's kind of handy when you want to build some um, nice looking template and you don't want to purchase the image. Uh, so we have plenty of uh, the free images that are available. Okay, so let's go ahead and pick one of these uh, images here. So that becomes your um, the top uh, image logo. And again, as you can see, it is quite big. Uh, the way you're gonna update is you select this content item, it shows the properties, and here it shows auto width. I don't want auto width, I wanna reduce it. So I'm reducing the scale. And that's how you're actually gonna go edit um, the image. And it could be left aligned or right aligned, or maybe centered. You can have all text uh, for the image. Um, <clears throat> you can have a link that's gonna go to maybe your website. Or you can also have a uh, email. So typically for the header, I assume that you would have the web page, and then you have other options as well. So once you kind of uh, uh, done everything, you just click on the save to Salesforce, and then that saves the base template so now you still haven't created the main template you just save the base template as you can see you have an option to delete it and you can clone this as well um, and if you wanted to add any merge fields this is again a utility section where you can actually pick up and then add the merge fields as well yeah uh, so clone is quite easy all you need to do is just uh, click on this uh, clone and then it just uh, uh, creates copy of this and then that becomes your a clone one, you can start uh, modifying this if needed. Yeah. And now, uh, before you go to the uh, actual creation of the email template, uh, you always click on this template builder because we want you to kind of refresh 
uh, slight issue that we have seen in Lightning, um, especially uh, when you have multiple tabs in that. So it's always better to just come from a template builder tab and then um, go to the respective sub tabs that is female template or base template. Uh, so now that we are done with the base template, you want to create an email template. Again, I'm going to go here and select uh, my folder where I want to create my um, uh, templates, for example, uh, my templates. And then I say, hey, I want to create a brand new template. So I'll select a brand new template. And here, there are two options here. Again, please don't get confused. So if you do not want to use the base template, that's fine. You can just give a template name and then the email subject and then keep going, right? But if you want to use a actual base template, uh, then you can come here and say, um, this is a header and footer template and select the base template, uh, which is actually gonna load the base template that you just created. Um, and then, um, <clears throat> Let me just go start off my templates and then create a brand new template. And then here you're actually going to create, uh, sorry, select any of the templates that you already have, right? Uh, for example, um, uh, where is this? let's take a look at the copy of this. Sorry. Uh, seems like I forgot to save the. Uh, template that I created to Salesforce. Okay, let me just pick up any other ones that I have. Okay, so let's pick up one of the old uh, base templates that I created. So here you can see that we have something to start off and it's got a header and a footer. And then I have uh, a section here that is kind of a placeholder section. Again, uh, you can delete this and you can recreate uh, the number of rows that you wanted, or you can start off from here. So, for example, let's say you want to add um, more uh, to this. For example, just want to add one more uh, row there, and this could be maybe a button, right? Uh, so, um, that could be a simple, um, as simple as uh, saying, hey, dear first name, uh, meaning dear name, and then this is to just demo the merge fields and the template. Right. And then uh, here we're going to add the merge field in a moment. Uh, so here's the button. Uh, again, uh, so if you want to change this, you just have to right click and then just change the name there. And then here, on the right hand side, as I said, the content properties, it shows the uh, the link type, it could be an email, right? Uh, so it could uh, go to any of your email addresses and uh, I am interested, please contact me, something like that. And then um, the width could be, again, uh, changed. Um, and then you can change the color background color and you can align it left align right align or center the various other options you have um, this could be changed as well right and the padding and everything right and then uh, similarly you have this uh, which is a social icons uh, you can change the the look and feel if you want um, or you can actually just enter whatever the, the respective url um, it could be something like this right and that could be changed and same thing with the linkedin you can add more icons to so the social icons that we support um or you can actually delete any of them just by clicking on this delete and this is another uh footer area so if you want to make any changes you can do that uh, you can see that this is a link uh, so we do have an option to uh link anything so for example this could be uh your website just come and then display uh, so add this um, uh, the URL and the text you want to display all of that and you can say you want to open it in a new window or the same window and then save so that's how you kind of add the links 
and you have other options for the text. If you want to edit it, we have an option to change the font. Uh, we have an option to change the size and the background color. All of that is there available. Uh, so let's just go ahead and add a mouth fill here. So this is basically coming in from contact. An example, again, go to the contact and then say, I want to add uh, a mouth fill from contact first name and select that. Okay. So that's how you um, select the mouth fill. Okay, sure. For the company i'm just going to go show you how to select a merge field for the parent again go to account id and then uh, account name and select that okay and if you have more um meaning like if you want to go drill down to uh one more level and if you have a parent from here, you can always select it, for example, in you know, the owner of the account, and it shows the owner fields there. Um, again, uh, could be coming in from uh, you know, the owner field, and when you click done, it shows contact.account.owner.person. So it's going to go three levels up, right? So like that, we support up to six levels uh, technically, but you know, you can always increase it if you need it, but we thought that six uh, level should be more than enough uh, in a day-to-day -day scenario. Okay. So this is uh, one simple uh, template. So you just have to go click save and then um, and then save to Salesforce. Make sure that you click on this button. Don't forget. So that will actually uh, create this template uh, right within Salesforce. So I forgot to give a name, so let me just go to the name. So, uh, demo template for let me just do a name. So, once again, make sure that you click on the save button. That's the work that you've done in the editor and save to Salesforce. That actually creates a template right with the um, Right with the Salesforce. So now, if you actually want to see, so this is under my templates. So if you go back to classic templates in Salesforce, and then uh, my templates, you will see this uh, the demo template that we just created. Um, if you are curious, you can always go open it and then you can see, but never make any changes in this uh, Salesforce UI. For, uh, if you have created this using Mass Mailer, make sure that you edit in Mass Mailer. If you created any template in Salesforce, uh, we always recommend that you edit them right within uh, Salesforce itself. So basically, anything created in Salesforce, edit it there. Anything created in Mass Mailer, edit in Mass Mailer. So that's the key thing to remember. Okay. So now that you have the templates uh, that are created, um, so uh, quick test. Let's just uh, just do a quick test. So I'm going to go to the Outlook wizard. And then um, to the name. I'm not going to cover full features here, so that would be in a different um, webinar. And then um, let's just see what. Okay, I got plenty of um, test views here. I'm just going to select one of them. And then from here, I would say my templates and then select the uh, demo template for Merge Field. So that's what we are going to use in this scenario. Uh, so here, when you're actually trying to select a template, uh, again, you have two options. So if you already have a, a template um, that is already created, go ahead and select it right there. Uh, the folder and template, and that's what we recommend. You create uh, the template in advance and then select it. That makes it easy. Otherwise, if you try to create something on fly, um, then there is no way you can make any changes to it, or you can, um, you know, you cannot even save that as a template. So, um, so it's always better to create a, create a template in advance and test it. 
Uh, so if you selected a template here, do not select the base template. Uh, we're gonna change this UI a little bit so that it doesn't show this here. So basically if you select a folder and a template, that's it, that's what you're gonna do. Uh, you don't need to do anything with the base template option here. Uh, we provided this little bit more advanced feature. If you ever wanted to create a template from a base template on fly, you can do that. Uh, again, this UI is a little confusing, but this will be changed um, so that you don't see this option here. Okay, so here we have everything got loaded. Um, so we have all the merge fields and everything. Uh, you will notice that there's a merge field section here too. This is kind of provided at runtime. If you needed to add anything, you can come in and add those uh, fields from here. And I forgot to cover that we support both classic and lightning. I mean, if you want to take a look at that uh, quick. Test so for example, uh, we have the first name. Yeah, let's see how does it change. So there's a classic notation. Uh, you see the uh, curl, uh, the brackets are different, and then um, uh, the asterisk. And if we switch to lightning, it shows the curly braces, right? Right, uh, in a kind of a different notation. So we support uh, either one of them. Uh, like you can mix and match if needed, but it's always better to just stick to the classical lighting based on how you want to kind of use them in the templates, yeah? Okay, so we have this now, and uh, all you're gonna do is just save, quickly save that, uh, and then um, again, go to the next step, and uh, go to the next step here not making any changes i'll keep going and then delivery options again i'm just wanna just wanna send it now and then go to the next step and finally you can review everything and then you can submit um, if you want to test it out before actually sending out this email you could always do it by send test um, so you can just have comma separated values and then select a merge field from here and then you can just uh, click on send now um, that's how you do it uh, that's uh, you can have comma separated values like this so it's quite easy and then send now yeah. otherwise you could uh, just go to the final step that is click this finish button and submit. So what we have done is we basically created um, a template in MassMailer using the MassMailer template builder and we added some merge fields there uh, from contact and account and then um, they sent an email. Right? Very simple use case scenario. Now if we go here So I got some uh, uh, six emails because I had six contacts there. So it says DSIVA and then there is this uh, company name is also replaced. So that's that's how you're actually gonna uh, work with the multiples uh, for the current object as well as the parent object, right? That's one use case scenario, right? And um, the other use case are actually very interesting I want to show it to you is the campaign. I, I believe I already have a template that is created. Um, let's just take a look. So, um, okay, let's go to campaigns. Again, uh, I'm gonna kind of draw, uh, kind of quickly show you how to um, send an email via campaign. Uh, so this is not a full demo of uh, the campaign feature. So I already have, um, I already have a campaign that is created. I'm gonna go, Reset campaign number status to new so that I already have the campaign ready with campaign numbers. Uh, so I'll show you the campaign members that I have is one lead and one contact in this particular campaign. Uh, so you can actually see the difference on um, the merge fields uh, when you're actually working off of a campaign. Uh, so it has uh, two campaign members. 
I'm going to go click view all. You can see there's a lead and a contact. And I got uh, kind of uh, the first name is uh, is the same as the last name is a little different, right? And I got the company name. Yeah. So that's that's what I have in this campaign. So I'll go back to the campaign here. And then uh, you basically go select this option here and then send via mass mailer if you want to send emails from the campaign. I'm gonna go send a brand new one next. So we have two campaign numbers and then the email template. I'm gonna go uh, select a template that is predefined campaign merge field test. Okay. So I created this template um, some time ago. Uh, so it would have, um, it's, it's kind of interesting to see how this, I mean, this it may be a little confusing, but I'm gonna explain this. So here I have dear contact first name, uh, lead first name, yeah? So I can always change this to last name. Uh, so for example, if you want to see the difference, yeah? So last name, uh, last name. We can always make sure that that's the right notation. You can go here and just say, hey, want to see what is the last name for contact? Uh, so come here and select that. So that is the, okay, so I got it right. So um, the reason why I have this dear contact and then immediately without any space or anything, I have lead first name, uh, lead last name, right? Because a campaign can have a contact or lead. Um, so we do not know which camp, uh, the campaign member uh, belongs to lead or contact um, unless we are executing um, the records on time. Only we can figure out uh, a campaign member belongs to a leader or contact. So if it belongs to a lead, then we use the, uh, the merge fields related to the lead and ignore the ones that you have for the contact. Uh, so that's more like a little technical behind the scenes why uh, you need to have both of them, but we use only one of them based on what type of, uh, of uh, um, record it is, whether it's a contact or lead. And then you have an option here um, to add fields from the, um, actual campaign member. Uh, this is just an example. Uh, so you can pick up the campaign member, campaign.name, and then campaign member first name. So again, we do support them here. Uh, so you just start to go to campaign member, select a field. You can pick up the fields from campaign member, or you can actually pick up the fields from the campaign itself. So if you have any uh, fields in the campaign that you want to bring in, you can just uh, select that and it shows the campaign member dot campaign dot name. So that's uh, how simple it is. I have a field here from uh, the user as well. We do support um, objects that is uh, the user and the organization. Uh, so you can select them and then find out the respective uh, fields from there. Okay. So once you have that, you just have to save and that is your uh, template. And then uh, Go to the next step. Go to the next step. Next step. The next step. And finally, we're going to review everything and finish. So, what we have done is we basically are sending email to a campaign uh, that has got one lead and a contact and the merge fields are coming in from other lead or contact. Uh, so that's a kind of a test that we've done. So it's kind of a little different from uh, the way you do it from regular outreach wizard. Uh, so again, um, it should uh, send an email uh, to uh, those uh, contact and lead with the respective uh, merge fields. So I got to, so you can see, um, this is the last name that I have, so dear, the Rocky Mass Miller, that's one of the last names that I showed it to you. And it has got um, uh, the campaign member name, 
Um, and then this is the campaign name, the module test. So you can see that that is actually better. And that this is the username. And here in this scenario, uh, I just picked up um, a different last name. Uh, so kind of uh, um, different from what we have there, right? Uh, so it's got the campaign uh, fields and also the campaign number and the user. So that's a kind of a different option that you have when you're actually using campaign. Yeah. So, um, and finally, I wanted to uh, kind of uh, go through how you do it for um, the custom object. Uh, so the way you can enable objects is by going to Mass Miller Setup, Email Settings, and by default, um, you would see the objects that are enabled in Mass Miller. If you want to add anything new, you just have to click on this plus button and then select any um, object that you want to support. Select the field and then you just have to save. Uh, so I already have course that is um, uh, selected uh, and that's what actually I'm going to use. So this is where you actually go um, support any new object in Mass Miller. Okay, so now let's take a look at uh, courses. So I have uh, courses custom object here. And let's see what I have. So I have uh, okay, so there's uh, this one email, and this I think uh, this is actually valid. I'm going to pick this, and then this is another one. I'm going to select these two. And there's a button called send via mass mailer. So you select this, uh, click this button. Again, that's going to take you to that uh, outreach wizard. Um, so go to the next step. Target audience, you got two um, records that are selected. Next step here, we're actually going to select a template for. I think, I think this is the one for course. Let's just take a look. If not, I'm going to change it. Okay, so maybe. Okay, so here uh, I'm going to go add course name. So what I'll do, I'll pick up a um, custom object from there and then uh, select uh, a field and then this is your custom object. So you just have to come here and then uh, just enter whatever the module that you want to enter and then save it and go to the next step the next step keep going the delivery options and then finally review and then finish Okay, now if you go back to this. Okay, so I got this email and it shows the it shows the mode field coming in from the custom object. We have uh, the computer science and the math that is kind of uh, coming in from the custom object as you can see, right? So that's how you send out email to uh, custom object using the merge fields that are uh, available on that particular object, right? So we basically covered um, so how to create a template, um, how to create templates in Mass Mailer and Salesforce, how to use the merge fields from uh, the regular object or from the parent object or from the campaign or from the actual uh, custom object itself. Um, and then uh, what else we also covered how to create um uh, cost, uh how to enable any object in our mass mailer uh and pretty much we got everything covered here let me take a look 
Okay, so yeah, we covered the more fields, we covered the drag and drop editor, and then we cover how to create templates and we cover the classic templates. Pretty much everything is being covered today. So I will open up for any questions that you may have. If you have any questions, put it in the chat window or I can uh, unmute. Okay, so if you have any questions, uh, feel free to put in the chat window or just let me know. Otherwise, um, you can always send an email to me. Um, my contact information is right here. Sivar.dvaki.masmila.io or you can um, call on this number 1-800-297-0991. You can also go to our website that's masmila.io and then uh, uh, put in the contact information on the contact form. Right. So uh, once again, thank you so much for joining the webinar today. And I appreciate um, being a prospect and a customer. And any questions, uh, feel free to contact us and we look forward to helping you. Once again, this is a, a, a weekly webinar, so we will have another webinar uh, next, uh, next meaning, meaning next Thursday. And the topic would be decided um, uh, sometime uh, this week or next week, and you will receive an email. You also will receive uh, a recording video from this. Thank you so much once again. Appreciate um, joining this webinar today. Bye-bye.